Oh, excuse me. Wait, testing, testing. Hello, Internet. My name is Joshua, and I'll teach you how to code with Java and Kotlin. And the problem here is, given an array of integers, find the pair of adjacent elements that has the largest product and return that product. And um, you can see an example here, like, for example, uh, the largest here will be 7 and 3, which are the 21. Oh, okay. Sounds good. I don't know if you guys might have a similar problem like this in school or in an interview. And then you might be asked, you might be thinking to yourself, why in the world? This sounds kind of useless. Like, why do we want to return the largest product of a number? Well, here's a reason why. Oh, sorry, excuse me, I have a cold today. <laughs> now you know that in history, there's so many famous duos together. Batman, Robin, Tom, Jerry, Scooby-Doo, Shaggy, etc., etc. And you might be asking to yourself, uh, what is the most iconic duo that returns the largest outcome? Now, in order to solve that question, you have to code it. That's right, guys. So in that case, I'll be doing that for you today. Now, oh my god, my stuffy nose is going to be something. The inputs is an array of integers. That's an int array. The outputs, again, I'm doing this because I just want to, you know, refresh memory. What is the plan today? I'm kind of doing this impromptu. I've done this before, but it's been a while since I did this. So let's see if I remember <laughs> how to solve this question. Okay. We want to return the largest product. I'm just going to double check if that was correct. But yeah, we just returned the largest product. We don't have to return that pair of integers, thank goodness. And that's an int. So the goal, return largest product of adjacent. That means next to each other pairs of values. All right, so in order to solve this, I usually like um, break down the problem each part. I know some people will be like, oh, single line value. I mean, single line solution to solve this thing. But if you're just like me and need some time to think about it, I break it down one at a time. Okay, I'll just say I want to create a variable to store the max value and you can compare it once you iterate through the array. You can compare pairs and if that pair returns largest product store in max value variable it all right so let's see if I can do this hmm and max product all right iterate through the array let's see what I would do is huh. let's see hold for a second now, I think you guys learned about for loops already, so I'm going to go under that assumption. I think what I would do is I would initialize this with a product to compare with in the first place. So I'll do int max product equals input array. This is how you index values in Java. It starts at zero. And then multiply it by the first pair. And so that when I start, I can only, I can start with um, just one. And then I'll just go through that, oh sorry, just one. And I just go through that array, instead of going through all the way at the length, I would just go one before that because we're doing two at a time and it doesn't have to it doesn't have to um, go all the way. Also, be index out of value exception. We don't want that sort of issue. The position will just update one at a time. All right. And then the pair returns the largest product. So we do some comparison. In order to do comparison, I think you learned about this already. We do if and else statements. So if the max product is less than the pair presented to us, which is going to be calculated 
calculated by the position one time no not one I'm sorry I'm sorry about that I put array and by the iterator value at that position multiplied by its pair which is adjacent to it in other words one value next to it then that max product should be equal to input array position oh sorry we want to make sure we get rid of typos times input array position plus one Oh yeah, I forgot. I'm not sure if this is like Java 8 where you don't need to include the curly brackets. Let's make this nicer for you guys and I'll include the curly braces itself. And there you go. If it doesn't, then it just sticks with input array 0 and 1. And then it returns that value, so return the max product. So that's how it solved that problem. Let's hope this runs correctly. Unfortunately, usually I just solve the problem before I explain it, so I don't know if I missed a step. Oh my god, I got it correct. Hooray! <laughs> okay, good, good, I got it correct. Um, I'm sure there's faster solutions in how to solve this one. Um, but, you know, if there is, just comment it down below and I'll duly note that one. And maybe explain to how that works, like how I did it right here. And I'll, I'll pin your comment to the top if you had the best solution. Um, oh yeah, I sold this in Kotlin just like I promised. Let's see, sorry. Now, one thing about Kotlin, it makes it so amazing. It has the ability to do um, lambda functions. Let me see if I can uh, call how to do that one. I'm trying to think right here. Oh shoot, okay, actually I might need to do this. Kotlin map. All right, how does this work? Oh, actually, when in doubt, use this quick tutorial. No, just not map, Bob, just map. Err. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is that using Kotlin, you can write lambda functions where that, um, where the array could try to calculate the values itself and return um, what lambda functions does. Let me just, gosh, let me see the map, please. Wow. Why is it being so hard on me? Oh, here. Ah, there you go. Transformation functions. That's what it is. Okay, I see. Okay, so returns a list containing the results of give, applying the transform function to give to each element in the original function. I see. All right, so I think I'm having an idea. Oh, here's an example. I oh, see right here. Okay, now it's coming to me now. All right, so um, you know, when in doubt, always look up the documentation and see some examples to get more familiar with the topic. Right here, I just show you right here. So um, you can see a fast way to do this instead of doing um all that iteration I showed you above. You can just apply a transform function. A transform function is, let me see if I can find a way to describe it to you. Oh, excuse me, my nose. Uh, Kotlin, why you have to be so specific to me? Okay, transform functions allow you to, oh my gosh, they're yeah, making it easier for us. See, this is why Man, Google is so much better than, than uh, transform function. All right, so collections. Okay, so collections like arrays, they have transform functions that allow you to build new collections based on the existing ones below. What transform functions does is that it allows you to return results from um, like a collection, like an array, like we worked on over oh, right here. You can see right here. So you can see that you can return results of what you're looking for. And in our case, we just want to find the biggest, largest pair. So to do this, um, since we're giving it input array, we can do this. So 
Now this is where you can write um, ranges, zero dot 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 input array. And then we're going through the whole size of it, minus two, because we only want to do a few pair. We don't want to go, you know, out of index operation. Sorry, we want we don't want to um we don't want to go out of balance when we iterate through the map function. Excuse my nose, my goodness. This is how you write the lambda function for map. Um, I'll include the documentation in the description below. I'm trying to think here. Oh, at the end. Okay, so we're gonna create a um a collection because we're we're returning the the max collection. We could try to find. Uh, I want to see if that's real. Max. I see. So one of the functionalities is that you can turn the largest element created by that new collection from that transformation function. So I think it's just dot max right here. So when we're um, calculating the values inside here, um, the elements to find what's the largest product, we can find the largest max value right here. But with this part right here, this will turn the largest value. That will solve that problem for us. And let's see. So when we're iterating through the array from zero to from each position all the way to not to the end, we do input array, and then they have use it because it refers to the the object in question itself to iterate. Input array, put array. No, not not object, but like the value of each of the the collection itself. It plus one, I think, because that's the pair right next to it, adjacently. And it calculates that one. Man, I hope my memory is good, guys. Let's see, let's hope that's correct, guys, because, holy cow, invoke, put rate that size. Maybe this size is not a function, but rather a property that you can just invoke like that. Let's see. A return requires, huh? Expression required, required in a function. A return expression required in a function with a block body. Interesting. I'm thinking what happens if, let's see, I'm just gonna do this for a second. For example, let's see. Can I just do this one so that, that it's a single line function? I think this could work because it's a single line. We can make this a single line function if you want to. inference failed huh maybe it's because usually Kotlin one of the things that it's expecting is to make sure that <coughs> it doesn't return a null value <coughs> so to ensure that we cover that case Oh my gosh. That's one thing about Kotlin is it's a little sensitive to how you write your answers, but I think this one works right here for now. I think I'm glad I <laughs> I'm glad I guess I got that one right. Okay, good. I'm so glad it worked. Okay, so let me explain what's happening here because maybe I've not been clear. I'm just thinking at the brim of my head. Um, so right now I'll create a range of values that goes through the whole list. For example, if there's six elements. I'll be like zero, one, two, three, four, and um, not all the way up because um, we don't want to go out of bounds. And um, we map to make sure our transformation function called map, where we calculate a new collection based on the given value right here. And let's see. 
and we want the max value from that new collection. So that's technically the largest product. And the integer value should be should be um, in case that it doesn't there's something wrong with this function like if we could return a null value for some reason it will ensure that it return a minimum value from integer this is an Elvis um, operator in other words it's going to say that if null return this value okay guys oh my gosh um, if there's a way that I can uh, present the solution much better or if you have a better solution just um, comment below and I'll pin it or I'll ask people to like it and say like oh my gosh you guys are geniuses I like I'd like to learn from you thank you so much um, if you have any critiques on how I can improve my teaching style um, I'm open to feedback I think I definitely need some I'm still new to teaching topics and I believe in order to become a better teacher you have to be taught how to be a better teacher yourself anyways um oh I forgot if you like and subscribe then I will not just send you one beautiful baby but get one free one ad baby adjacent to the other baby <laughs> I'm just kidding I just found this funny photo and I'm like I might as well share with you guys so um yeah anyways guys thank you for watching and have a, be a beautiful day see ya oh shoot I can't exit out ah